So what is the best tactical approach with somebody who is, say, prideful, angry, aggressive, and, and just overflowing with objections and scattering their challenges out kind of one after another after another? This sounds very much to me like a steamroller, and in the tactics book, I have a, uh, a chapter on dealing with the steamroller. Now, a steamroller fulfills almost all of those uh, descriptions. They're, they're usually angry, certainly aggressive, uh, much of the time filled with pride, and offering bang, 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 one thing after another. Uh, the characteristic quality of a steamroller is interruption. That is, they'll give you a challenge aggressively and maybe angrily, and so you'll do your best to begin to respond to that. Once they hear something they don't like, bang, they interrupt, break you off, and challenge what you're saying. And before you know it, you've got four or five things stacked up here, okay? Now, the best way to deal with someone like that, you're not going to deal with their pride or their anger or their uh, a a a aggression or hostility. What you can do is channel it and also the multiple questions business. This is also applies if you have four or five people that are ganging up on you at the same time. What you do first is you try to stop the, the, the flow, okay? And you, you can do it, I think, in a, uh, a gracious way, a genial fashion at first. And that is just, to, just to, to, to pause the conversation. I'm putting my hand up here because uh, I use some uh, body English um, when, when I encounter somebody like that. And I'll say something like this. Hold on just a minute. I'm, just give me a second to finish my thought. Would that be okay? So it's just an easy, gentle pause. It's a request that you be allowed to talk until you finish, and then you'll let the other person come in. Okay? Hold on just a minute. You want to hear my answer? Okay, I want to give it to you. But I can only take one at a time. And see, that's another line that might be helpful. One at a time. Whether it's one question at a time from the same person or one challenge at a time from different people who are ganging up on you, it's the same thing. I want you to understand, though, what I'm looking for in this negotiation. I am not willing to continue in a conversation with somebody or a group of people unless it can be done in a measured, thoughtful, genial fashion. If a person is going to keep interrupting and banging in and a whole bunch of people are going to gang up on me, I am going to require of the circumstances that it be done differently or else it's not going to be done at all. My first step in that is just to make this soft maneuver. Uh, and that is to say, hold on just a second. I'm not quite done. Uh, give me a second and I'll be glad to let you in. Is it okay if I answer the question? Is that all right with you? And you listen for them, their response. They say, yeah, that's all right. Then you make your response. Now, be sure to try to keep it trimmed up a little bit because this person wants to get in and uh, they're anxious, so their patience may be short. And in fact, they may break trust right away and start interrupting again. And that's when you say, hold on, you're breaking in again. Listen, when I finish, I'll let you talk and I won't break in on you. Is that all right? Okay, so that's the first step, and a lot of times that's all it takes. Hold on just a minute, I'm not quite finished. Let me finish and I'll let you back in. And then you're done, great. Then you're back and forth and you've got a gracious conversation. It might be, like I said, you have to remind the person a couple of times, that's all right. However, what if they just completely b break trust with you and they just are, are steamrolling right over the top of you? At this point, you do the same thing that you did in number one, the first step, except for it's more aggressive. So I call it stop them, and the second step is shame them. That is, you directly address the inappropriate, rude behavior. Again, you are not nasty, you are not harsh, you are friendly. You don't put your hands on your hips and say, will you please stop it, or can I get a word in edgewise? That's just not going to be helpful with a person like that. And it may be that you can't even get in. Then let them roll all over the place until they got to get a breath and they pause, and then you address the problem with, before you start answering any questions. And then you directly say, you know what, I would love to answer your question. The problem is you keep interrupting me. And if you keep interrupting me, I cannot continue like this. So I just need to ask you, would you like to have a back and forth conversation without interruptions? Uh, or not. And if you don't and you want to keep doing this, this conversation is over. So you tell me. So once again, you put it in their lap. 
and see what they say. A little more aggressive. That would have been inappropriate at first if you did it that way from the beginning. But now they've broken trust, so you can be a little more aggressive. Not nasty, but firm, okay? So first you stop them. If that doesn't work, you shame them. If that doesn't work, you leave them, okay? Not everybody deserves an answer. Jesus said, don't throw what is holy to dogs or uh, pearls before swine. And uh, the idea there, Jesus said, is lest they turn on you and tear you to pieces. Uh, look, sometimes you're in conversations with people who just want to tear you to pieces. I do not think you have to stay and play. Go through the sequence. It's all in the book. Tactics, a game plan for discussing your Christian convictions. And uh, if they don't want to play in a civil way, then, then leave them. That's the best way to deal with somebody like that.